Shalom, all praises unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Raka Kodash. Double honours unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect Akim that teach in this word. Shalom, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Raka Kodash. Shalom. So yeah, this um, this is just some um, information I came across, which um, you know we know, we know we know we we spoke about this stuff over the years, pretty much of the you know the conquistadors, and their conquering of the Americas, you know of the tribe of Ephraim, you know of the um the the Northern Kingdom basically, so but this is something I was look checking out. The, it's called the best. They're called the Besarillo. All right, it's, they're terrifying war dogs of the Spanish conquistadors. And there was a specific dog in particular called the Besarillo dog. I'm going to play the clip. I'm going to play this clip. And I'm going to actually upload the actual full clip as well. But I'm going to play a little bit of what they say here. And it was basically like a vicious war dog, which the conquistadors, um, you know, used to... What was one of their weapons that they used to conquer the Tainos, you know, or the tribes over there, and that to put hell on them. And they, you know, they say that the dog was worth more than like a hundred soldiers, basically. It was a terrifying um, ordeal, you know. So I'm going to play some of this and I'm going to read the scriptures because this is the, you know, the horrors Esau brought upon us, man. And they're going to pay for this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this here. Ponce de Leon was the conqueror of Puerto Rico. After landing there in 1508, he filled his pockets with gold before convincing Christopher Columbus's son. He said he filled his pockets with Ponce de Leon, who conquered uh, Puerto Rico, right? He says he filled his pockets with gold. Isn't it something that we always say that, you know, that, you know, the tribes were playing with rubies over there, man? So them devils, when they went over there, they, their eyes lit up, man. You know, because it weren't just Columbus. There was um, Hernan Cortez. There was Pizarro, Ponce de Leon. There was plenty of them, man. You know, so I'm gonna play this. Diego, to declare him governor of the island. He then set out with men and dogs to subdue the native population and become rich. He trained his prized possession Becerillo to become a powerful weapon. The dog was taught to distinguish between the Spanish and the natives, to search out and cut down runaway captives, and to kill in battle. The 16th century Spanish historian and chronicler Bartolomé de las Casas reported that Becerillo attacked his enemies with frenzied rage and defended his friends with great courage, adding that the indigenous people were more afraid of ten Spanish soldiers with Becerillo than a hundred by themselves. Becerillo was so skilled at tracking down, killing and terrorizing the natives, that he was worth 50 soldiers to Ponce in his campaign to subdue the Taino people of Puerto Rico. In 1512, Ponce de Leon's luck would change. Diego Columbus became envious of the riches that Ponce de Leon was acquiring in Puerto Rico. Diego convinced the king to name him governor instead, officially usurping Ponce. Not ready to let go of his pursuit of wealth, Ponce secured a grant to conquer an island named Bimini that rumor had it was full of gold and treasures. He set sail in 1512, leaving Becerillo under the care of Gallard de Salazar and Sancho de Aragon. Salazar was quick to utilize Becerillo in battle. One night, Becerillo alerted the conquistadors of a surprise attack being launched by the natives. Salazar launched into action with the dog by his side, and in just 30 minutes, Becerillo had savaged and killed 33 of the natives, leaving behind a battleground of bodies. Becerillo shows mercy. So this is, this is, I mean, there's more to the clip, but pretty much, you know, that's the horrors that, you know, the tribes were facing. These vicious, these vicious animals that Esau trained to kill natives, you know, the conquistadors. And it was a horrendous way of dying. That's why whenever you see the pictures, if you type in, because it's a, it's a shame. I'm going to read this first. I'm going to read this first. Deuteronomy 28 and 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, which is Esau. This is the curses that the Lord brought upon our, um, the Israelites, so-called Negroes. Latinos and Native American people. So this is the curses, right? Deuteronomy 28, 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Yeah, because when those, uh, when the um, Edomites came from Spain, the conquistadors came from Spain, the, the, the natives, they didn't understand their language. All right? 
They didn't understand the language, man. And it, it says, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Yeah, because the um, the, the Esau, when the conquistadors went and encountered the Israelites, which the Tainos over there and the Arawaks and the Indian peoples over there in the Americas, they didn't understand their language at, first, uh, at the beginning. And this is a nation of fierce countenance because them devils, they came armored up, fierce. They came for war. I mean, I, the movie shows you like the f conquest of America, the conquest of paradise, the Columbus movie kind of shows you they went there and bartered with them at, at the beginning, then bought war, you know? And there's even writings, you know, because they, they mentioned in that clip, um, Bartholomew de las Casas, you know, there's he's got a lot of writings out there. And, it, you know, they even talk about that where, you know, when the natives encountered the the Spanish, the conquistadors, you know, they saw their armor, they saw them glitter, their armor glittering, you know, shining armor. They saw their swords. They didn't instantly understand what it was, basically. So the writings say, you know, and the way they even make these things out is as if, you know, they just went there and, you know, took them all out. It didn't, they had wars. They had, Esau lost wars too, but it was our time to go down, according to the curse, man. A nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old nor show favor to the young. Exactly. So these devils, they didn't show favor to the old, um, old of the tribes. They didn't show favor to the old of the tribes nor the young. And it's funny because with these movies, um, with, you know, with like the Southern Kingdom, there's a lot of movies you know, that kind of show you a little bit about slavery and things of that nature. With the no Northern Kingdom, there's not too many movies out there. There's a few, but not too many to show you the horrors of what happened. You know, they were um, killing babies, burning bodies. They had the dogs ripping us apart, ripping the tribes apart, you know? So it shows you that, man. And, and when you see uh, with the Northern Kingdom, if you type in the, the conquest of the Americas, like in Google Images, you've always got them, them drawings, for example. You know, and it will show you dogs, you know, with severed heads on the floor, eating severed heads, eating bodies, arms and, you know, the evils that they bought, basically. And that Bessarillo dog was part of that, man, that the war dog. So it's a, a nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old nor show favour to the young. And they showed us no mercy. Nope. They didn't show, they didn't regard the old nor show favour to the young. They totally was decimating us and stealing. Ponce de Leon. It shows you that in the, they mentioned that Ponce de Leon conquered the, um, conquered the tribes over there, the Tainos, and what did they say? He's filled in his pockets with rubies, man. Just like Esau, right? The greed of Esau. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get this here. Hosea nine. This is the book of Hosea. Hosea nine and and eleven. Hosea nine and eleven. It says, As for Ephraim, their glory shall flee away like a bird. From the birth and from the womb and from the conception. Though they bring up their children, yet will I bereave them. That there shall not be a man left. Yea, woe also to them when, when I depart from them. Ephra Ephraim, as I saw, Tyrus is planted in a pleasant place. But Ephraim shall bring forth his, child Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. And who's the murderer? Esau. Esau shall, um, Ephraim shall bring forth his children unto the murderer because what happened, man? E, Esau, you know, uh, during the time of the conquest of the Americas, right? They decim they were decimating our people over there. They even say that that what's that writing with uh, Columbus? He didn't put his sword down for one minute. He was just slaying and killing. You know, they they massively, you know, depopulated the tribes over there and enslaved us. But it's the, it's the spirit. It's the spirit of the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. But like it says here, Ephraim, as I saw, Tyrus is planted in a pleasant place, but Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. And who's the murderer? The, the conquistadors, man. And who's Ephraim? Ephraim is the Tainos, the Arawak Indians, the Tainos that were over there in them islands when, when the um, Spanish first came. Ponce de Leon, who conquered uh, Puerto Rico, right? It, it tells you that, man. All right, and who's the murderer? The murderer is the Edomites, man. And they murdered, they were murdering us. Murdering, you know, Negroes, Latinos and Native American people, which are the Israelites, man. And they're going to pay for this. You know, it was, and it was gruesome. See, that history is gruesome. That's why these devils, you know, they want to sweep it under the rug today. They don't want to talk about that. And it's, it's a damn shame, you know. But it's all right anyway. It's all right. This is, um, so Ephraim will bring forth his children, you know, Unto the murderer, which is these devils, man. And they did that. They did murder us, man. 
All right. So this is I'm gonna read this here. I'm gonna read this here, right? This is um James. James, um, James two and thirteen. This is James two and thirteen because this is the judgments that's coming upon these devils, right? These Edomites today. Their end is near. James two and thirteen. For because it's all the curses the Lord put on us. James two and thirteen. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that have showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. So he, the Lord's gonna have judgment without mercy. Just like we read in Deuteronomy, um, was it Deuteronomy I was reading that in? Uh, yes, in Deuteronomy. They, they didn't show no favour to the uh, old nor the young. All right? No mercy. That's what the, the, these, these conquistadors bought. No mercy with them. So the Lord's going to have no mercy. So it's Because remember, you, those people you did that to were Israelites. And we always mention that scene from uh, the 1492 when Columbus said, you know, he because we know Columbus brought Hebrew interpreters with him, and even he even um, mentioned the Book of Ezra in that. Why? Because he knew they were going to encounter those Taínos, those Arawaks. They were going by those names that they were going to encounter were the tribes of Israel. So James two and thirteen, for he shall have judgment without mercy, that have showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Yeah, and these Edomites, they've showed no mercy, man. All right. They showed no mercy. It was just total de destruction that they bought, man. All right? To the point where the tribes today, you know, apart from the Akiyam and the, the hopeful elect that are waking up today in these last days, our people are destroyed because it's the effects and the wounds of slavery, man. To those tribes today, those the Latin-speaking tribes, they totally worship Esau for the most part. Yeah, you've got a lot of our people that hate Esau too, but for the most part, they worship the Catholic Church, the, the image of the so-called white man. Why? Because that goes back to that history of the, co the conquest. The conquest of the Americas, man. So it's a, it's a wound that's on our people till this day. But the Lord said he's going to have judgment without mercy, for he shall have judgment without mercy that showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. So you showed no mercy, you Edomites, you're going to get no mercy. You know, that's, that's what the Lord said. That's what the scriptures say. So I'm going to read this here, Revelation 13 and 9. And I'm going to end it on this. Revelation 13 and 9. It says, If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity, which is slavery, shall go into captivity. So you're going in slavery. That's, the, that's, that's what's going to happen to Esau. So we're going to go, when the Lord raises us up and we come back on the earth to enslave the nations, we're going to go places like Spain, Portugal, you know, Russia. We're going to enslave those that are Edomites over there. We're going to separate our people from among the Edomites and we're going to enslave them from the wicked seed. So Revelation 13 and 9, If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. That's right. And that's what we're waiting for. That's the, and the saints are the Israelites. You know? And we're waiting to enslave you Edomites. And guess what? Ponce de Leon... Uh, Christopher Columbus, you know, P uh, Pizarro, Hernan Cortez, all these devils, they're going to be in slavery. You know, they're, they're, they're going to be in slavery. They're coming back. They're going to be reincarnated back in the earth to serve their captivity. We're going to, the same things they did unto us, we're going to do to them. Because spirits are always reincarnated, man. So them devils, they're going to be back. All that, all that evil they did in the past, they're going to have to account for it in these end well, for a thousand years when we enslaved them, basically, these end days is the time where they're about to pay. So that's the point. It says, must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And that's what we're patiently waiting for, man. So with that, I'm going to say all praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rocha Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to the hopeful elect Akim that teaching this word. Shalom, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rocha Kodash. Shalom.